Hello and good morning. Good morning, each and every one of you guys. This is Benaya. This is the Trend Volume Podcast. Well, 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 it's Sunday. I do want to wish everybody a happy and healthy Sunday, whether you're religious or not. I do think it's a day of reflection. It's a day to spend with your loved ones and your family and to reconnect to the higher power, the majesticness of the Almighty, whether you're spiritual or not. I do believe there's a force at play much bigger than us and we are to pay homage to that force. So with that said, um, today what we're gonna do is look at the fundamental news. So we're gonna look at the real world synopsis and then we're gonna segue into the technical analysis. We'll be dissecting time fractals as always. We'll be looking at a monthly, so top down, monthly, weekly, daily, then four hour. And then we will marry up these time fractals on the kaleidoscope and see exactly what the picture alludes to. And then we can set our sale, set our, you know, trades accordingly. I think it's a good place to say I'm not a financial advisor. It's not financial advice. This is simply me journaling my approach and you should always conduct your own due diligence. So with that said, this weekend is very special. Why is it very special? A couple of reasons. If you listen to the prior podcasts, you will know that this forthcoming Monday is a bank holiday. Now it's a bank holiday for America, it's a bank holiday for Canada, it's a bank holiday for Japan. So there's three places where they've got a bank holiday. So there'll be an absence of liquidity in the open markets as a repercussion. Now we had the Chinese bank holiday on Friday just gone as well. So it's kind of like a mad weekend, right? We had China now on the 9th of October, we've got Canada, America and Japan. Okay, cool. Now. Going into next week, we also got the IMF speaking, which is the International Monetary Fund. And they'll be discussing monetary policy and, you know, what's what and, you know, all that good stuff. So typically it'll be a volatility week next week. That's what we can derive from the data that we've got today. And in saying that, we do have a lot more data sets coming out next week. So we've got US CPI, which is the Consumer Price Index, month on month and year on year. I believe that's coming out on the Thursday. Yes, it's coming out on the Thursday. And that's hailing from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So I do put a lot of credence on this data. It's a proxy for inflation. Saying that, we've also got the UK GDP coming out the same day from the Office of National Statistics, which is the UK's answer to the Bureau. Um, so fundamentally, we are looking like we are going to have a bit of a, a liquidity jerk off next week, to put it quite bluntly. Um, so yeah, we also got the FMOC meeting minutes as well. So FMOC meeting minutes is the Federal Open Market Committee meeting meeting, sorry, meeting minutes. <laughs> a, lot of, um, a lot of M's there. But fundamentally, what does it mean? It means more monetary policy being spearheaded by the people that matter. We've also got the M2 money stocks year on year coming out from the Japan, well, the Bank of Japan, should I say. So basically, it just measures the change in the total quantity of domestic currency in circulation and deposited in banks. So M2 is something that we do look at to you know, gauge how much money is in the economy. We look at the M2 money supply in Japan, America, the European area, and a few other areas to sort of draw our thesis. Um, so again, it's just all fundamental stuff to be aware of. And then last but not least, we've got Andrew Bailey ending the week on Friday and on Saturday. So on Friday and Saturday, we've got the Bank of England, Mr. Andrew Bailey speaking. Um, so it's just something to be aware of. Um, I believe he's speaking at the Institute of International Finance. It's an annual membership meeting in Morocco. So just something to consider. It's often a volatility event. Let's just say that. So next week, very, very data dense next week. IMF, CPI, GDP. Um, we've got the BOE. We've also got IMF linking up all next week. So. Let's see, we've also got Chinese M2 and also Japanese M2 coming out in terms of the monetary supply. So there's a lot of moving variables, right? Now let's find out exactly which way this is gonna crumble, okay? Because this is what it's all about, working which way the cookie will crumble. Because as you will know, my philosophy is this, if, if you're new to me, then just, you know, this is your introduction. If you're not new to me, then just just stick with me because I have to spoon feed the nuance on every delivery. 
Volatility is not direction implied, guys and dolls. So when people say, oh, the market is volatile, what does that really mean? It means nothing, right? It just means it could go up, could go down, right? It's either expanding or it's contracting. Now, I want you to remember this. Volatility is not direction implied. What is direction implied is the trend, the volume, and the momentum. That is direction implied, okay? So with that said, with that said, what we're gonna do right now is dive straight into the technical analysis, which is the study of the trend, the volume, and the momentum that marries up with the volatility that we're gonna see on display next week. So this gives us our edge over Tom, Dick, and Harry, a quantitative edge that can be measured, and what gets measured gets accomplished. So let's segue into the technicals right here, right now. So as promised, we're gonna be looking at the, um, monthly then we're going to go to a weekly then we're going to go to a daily then we're going to wrap it off of a four hour so in that particular order so looking at the monthly what do we see here we, we are still at resistance right we are still sandwiched right at this yellow area of contention so ultimately we are underneath the 21 day look back period on a monthly we are also underneath the sell side imbalance buy side inefficiency on the monthly which is all this yellow area here right this yellow line represents the 21 day exponential look back period better known as the 21 day EMA and this yellow rectangle depicts the largest red candle sorry largest red candle we've had this year which is August so in August we had the largest red candle this year and we are simply marking off the liquidity delivery in the middle meaning the displacement that transpired between July and September, we are highlighting the imbalance there, right? So it's the July low, which is where the start of the rectangle starts, and it's the September high, which is where the bottom of the rectangle ends, and it marks out the imbalance that was delivered in August. So we call it a sell side imbalance, a buy side inefficiency. So as long as we're underneath $28,182, risk is to the downside because we are within the inefficiency. Make sense? We are still being delivered here. Don't wanna get too jargon based with you guys. That's why I've marked it out very clear on your chart. So if you listen to the podcast, I'd highly recommend that you watch the accompanying video that you know complements the pod because just hearing my words and hearing my lingo, it will go over your head. I'm gonna let you know that for a fact. So this is something where you have to take notes and you have to have a visual on my chart when I'm talking this. Otherwise you will be left behind and I don't wanna leave no one behind. And I don't wanna confuse you and lose you. That's what I do not want to do. So it's in your best interest to take notes and to actually see the chart as I'm depicting the chart and you'll, you'll learn more from that. So cool, leave it there. So structurally, we're still bent over a barrel. Bitcoin's been in a downtrend since July. Okay, so since July, Bitcoin's been falling. The dollar has been rising since July. So it's very canny. We also see the S&P 500, that's been falling since July. So it's an inverse correlation, right? Dollar's been going up, Bitcoin and the S&P 500 have been going down ever since July. So it's just an inverse correlation to the strength of the dollar, which is exactly what you'd expect to see. Exactly what you'd expect to see. Cool. Um, is there anything else we wanna mention? Let's quickly go into the um, this shizzle here. So you see here, July, the S&P topped out here at $4,634, just putting it out there. Um, and then pulling up the dollar really quickly, we can see that the dollar started rising ever since Ever since, well, okay, we want a monthly here. Let's pull out a monthly. Let's go to a weekly. And let's, let's go into a daily. Let's go into a daily. And this is Dixie, right? So yeah, so this green dot right here is where she lifted off from, guys and dolls. So you can see that quite clearly on your chart, right? So this has been one of the longest trends the dollar's ever seen to the upside, by the way. One of the longest ever trends. And notably speaking, for the last three days, it's been pulling back, but it's, it's okay to pull back, right? It's been on the biggest onslaught since July. Of course, it's gonna have a three day break in, in October. It'd be only sensible to do so. It's not gonna go up linear with no regression, right? The market's ebb and flow, so you are gonna expect linear regression on this. So it's very simple. Um, this is why Bitcoin's popped up a little bit over the last three days, because the dollar's fallen over the last three days. However, when America opened back up on Tuesday, remember the bank holiday for Monday is, is quite peak. 
So everyone's back on play on Tuesday. I do think the dollar goes back up on Tuesday. That's what I think. I could be wrong, but we're going to measure the data every single day and keep our fingers on the pulse. So it's all good. But this is what we're hypothecating. Right now, the dollar's above the 21-day exponential moving average. It's above the 55-day moving average. And it's also above the 200-simple-day moving average, which is a very, very strong signal, especially on a daily time frame. Now, the only negative thing I'm going to say about the dollar is as follows. It's the momentum. The momentum on the dollar looks absolutely buggered. Okay, it doesn't look good at all. Um, notably speaking, the last time we was this high, it was May 2023, and we had a massive fall. The time before that was February 2023, we had a massive fall. The time before that was September 2022, we had a massive fall. Um, and I mean, you can go back and see multiple iterations in the past um, in your own time. But need I remind you, anytime we're at the critical region, which we are right here right now, with momentum waning to the downside the way it is, with the RSI inflection at 106, the MACD at 106, and the stochastics at 106. It basically means that as long as the dollar's underneath 106, risk is to the downside on the dollar, preliminary speaking, on momentum. Now it can change, right? And it will only change once we govern back above 106, keeping it simple. Okay, cool. So again, as long as the dollar's on a rampage, I am risk off on assets. Okay, assets will be getting pasted if the dollar's getting stronger. I repeat this many times, but it's worth mentioning again. If the dollar's stronger, you simply need less of it to purchase the same goods and services. However, if the dollar's weaker, you need more of it to purchase the same goods and services. So that's why we look at the dollar in isolation, not just Bitcoin, 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 or gold, 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 or S&P, S&P, S&P. It's not like that. Um, we have to look at the dollar in, in granularity to respect what actually is going on in the real world. So again, the dollar's really in a parabolic rise. This is why we're seeing property fall. We're seeing precious metals, gold, platinum, palladium, and silver fall. We're seeing Bitcoin and all the shit coins fall. So every asset class is correlated. There is a causation and a correlation with every financial quadrant. Simple. I've studied this backwards. I spent 80% of my 20s obsessing on the market. You know, it's, it's a very serious topic. Okay, cool. Leave it there. I'm going to have a little stretch. Oh, baby. Okay, cool. Let's go back into Bitcoin then. So, as promised, we're going to be digesting the monthly and the weekly. So, I think we've done the monthly, haven't we? So, remember, monthly. Let's just recap the monthly. The monthly is basically risk to the downside as long as we're underneath $28,182. My opinion is that the market will continue to fall as long as we are underneath that contention area. Okay, nice and simple. Um, now let's move, actually no, let's not move. I wanna stay on this one more second longer. So what you're gonna see here is a green line, okay? So if we're looking at our trend volume inflection indicator, there was a green line which depicts the stochastic momentum. Now on a monthly, Every time we've come from underneath, attempting to hit the 60 region, typically the market does have a pullback. Okay, it does have a pullback. Now, the last time, notably speaking, it done that was November 2019, which was four years ago, right? Approximately four years ago, we had the same signature that we do now. Now, what happened in that saga? Well, as you know, if you don't know, I'm gonna spoon feed some history lessons really quickly. We had the sell signal on Bitcoin in November 2019. What happened March 2020? Guys and dolls, what happened March 2020? March 2020, the markets capitulated to orders of magnitude, okay? We had the sell signal given to us in November 2019. We then had the March COVID pandemic of March 2020, right? We had no signal in between. So this would have told you to get out the market right there. Are you seeing this right here? get out the market, then buy back here, which was May 2020, which was just after March 2020, respectfully. And that's when we cascaded to the upside and melted up thousands to the north, parabolically, with no Fs given, no remorse. So the only reason I'm saying this is this, because look, I lost my father and grandfather to COVID, so I'm not saying, oh, we predicted COVID, look at us. No, not that at all. What I'm telling you is this, the numbers do not lie. Men lie, women lie, numbers do not. When the chart told us over a year ago, before March 2020 occurred, to get out the market, that's what you should have done. 
you know, it's tattooed on the chart. It's not something I've drawn on the chart because I think it overfits the narrative. It's tattooed on the chart, my guy. I put weight on this, right? Chicken heads were panicking when March 2020 occurred and, the, and there was a massive drop in March. Chicken heads were panicking. Oh, we never saw this. This was a black swan event. It wasn't a black swan event. Dude, the chart told you to get out in November 2019. What's the black swan about that if it transpires months and months later? Realistically speaking, look, one, two, three, four, five. You had five months to piss off. You had five months to sell before March 2020. If you were following the data, not what he said and she said on BBC News or your co-workers or your family members, they don't know toffee about this sport. They don't know toffee about it. That's why they think it's gambling. Oh, it's, it's, it's gambling. Oh, yeah, it's gambling. And it's, no, it's not. No, it's not. From you can manage your risk and you can manage your inflections and you can manage, okay, this is the asymmetry on risk to reward. This is the risk per trade. This is our position size. This is the leverage we're deploying. This is our assumption. And here, most importantly, is our invalidation. Here is where we're wrong. Here is where we change our opinion. On a lottery ticket, you can't do that. On a scratch card, you fucking can't do that. That's why we get rich on the markets. Not on lottery tickets, not on scratch cards, not on blowing on dice, not on getting mystic meg balls out and pretending we can predict the future. I don't predict the future. I follow the numbers. I acquiesce. I kiss the ring and I bend the knee. I believe numbers are God's fingerprint on humanity. I believe it's his divine design. I believe numbers are the way we measure the sciences, chemistry, physics, biology. And it's the same thing with technical analysis. Same thing. Same thing with meteorology. When you're studying the weather, right, they call it meteorology. And it's a mathematical school of discipline that's called stochastic, right? The weather forecasting is stochastic, meaning it's reflexivity, right? It's not razor point precision because when the data changes, the weather changes and they call it Bayesian statistics. It's the same discipline, bro. It's the same discipline. That's how legacy media gets you locked into it. Because they tell you lie, 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 lie. Then they drop in meteorology to make you think, oh yeah, this is real. Because they're talking about meteorology. And then they mix more lies, more agenda, more propaganda, and they, they fizzle it all out. That's how they keep you hooked. They drop a little bit of alpha in there, which is the weather forecasting. And the rest is populist opinion. Anyways. We are going to go into that in a minute, right? Because there is Israel tensions. That's not good for the market. Do you think the market's going to be bullish when Israel's at war with Gaza? Probably not. Do you think the markets are bullish when Putin is at war with Ukraine? Probably not. I'm not playing games with you. I'm not coming to blow smoke up your ass and tell you it's all fancy. I'm coming to tell you that if the market's going to drop, it's your fiduciary purpose to know how to navigate that, to put bread on the table, despite there being a debacle. You can just simply put a bet on that the market falls. The big boys, they, they take out things called catastrophe bonds, right? Their catastrophe bonds do numbers in times like now, right? In the book of Daniel, it says when technology rises, it will be the end of time. Guess what? Technology is rising. We've got AI. AI is smarter than humans, right? We're going that way. If we look at the book of Revelations, it says the bear nation shall rise. The bear nation is Russia. Let it sink in. It says there'll be a lion with wings, right? I'm sure, was it Israel or Gaza that's got the uh, lion with wings as one of their sort of logos? It's not a joke, bro. You've got to swap up on your scriptures because it's happening in real time. It ain't slowing down. It's not slowing down. But let me just quickly drink some coffee. My advice is this. I've got no financial advice for you. No financial advice whatsoever. My advice is this, you go buy two years worth of tinned food from your shops, okay, and you hoard it. That's what you do. You buy toilet paper from now and you hoard it. That's what you do. Because the next, the next black swan, the next 10 sigma event, the next shock, the next crisis will knock a lot of you guys out your socks, right? You lose your jobs. There will be no stimulus, there'll be no handouts, no bounce back loans, no furlough schemes. 
you're gonna need a skill set that you can use on the internet from your bedroom to make money. Otherwise, you're gonna be working harder for longer for the same victory barter that they're debasing at a biblical pace. And it's as simple as that. Cool, um, so cool, I think we're good for that. So um, again, the monthly is very, very solidified, right? So again, looking at the stochastic momentum, typically we would have a pullback in this region. The last time we had this signature was in November 2019, and then we saw the debacle of March 2020. I'm not saying we're gonna have that this time, but I'm just saying success leaves clues, and to know where you're going, you've got to know where you're coming from. So anytime we've seen this signature, it has led to a debacle. Just pointing it out there, right, it's data. Um, so cool, that's the probabilities and statistics, and that's exactly how you should think in terms of probability and statistics. You shouldn't be just programmed of what someone told you to believe and that's what you're gonna adopt, you know, that makes no sense. When the data changes, that's when you should change your opinion. That makes perfect sense. I'll leave it there. So let's pull up the weekly. How are we doing for time? So I've been going in today, 20 minutes. Okay, cool, we're good, we're good, we're good. So let's pull up a weekly. What do we see on a weekly? So looking at a weekly, um, we are at resistance for a myriad of reasons. Now let's go through each one, one by one. So looking at this, we've got a horizontal downtrend all the way from the all time high at $68,997 per BTC. That was given to us on the 8th of November. Subsequently, we've been falling ever since, shock horror. Now let's go have a look and zoom in on current price action delivery. We also see 50% sorry, 50 sell pressure. I'm gonna slow down my words here, I'm speaking too fast. Um, and by the way, if I am speaking too fast, because this is a podcast, you can always slow down the diction. That's a really funny thing. You can actually slow down my speech and you can speed up my speech, right? You've got the full autonomy on that. So again, if you're losing me, pause it, slow my voice down, take notes, do whatever you have to do, but simply please do not make it go over your head because this one is a special one. Every Sunday, I'm gonna really go on the nth degree with my delivery and there will be signal in the noise. It's your responsibility to fizzle out the noise and the signal, okay? But I'm gonna try and make it as easy as possible. I'm trying not to go on, you know, I'm trying not to go on too many rants and too many lectures. I'm trying not to rift too much. So let's keep it to the topic then. So looking at the weekly, what do we see? Right now, the weekly expires in 13 hours and 23 minutes. We've got sell pressure engulfing the weekly with 13 hours and 23 minutes into expiry. We also see price action underneath the 200 day look back period. What does that mean in layman's terms? Well, look, if an indice is underneath its 200 day look back period, typically textbook analysis 101 would govern it to be a downtrend, not an opinion. If we get a weekly expiry above the 200 day moving average, that would be bullish for further continuation back to the upside, back towards the current yearly high back in July. However, as long as we're underneath the 200 day look back period, which notably speaking is $28,100, the same area as the monthly, the weekly is telling us is stark resistance. So anytime the weekly and the monthly agree, I tend to agree as well because the more mature time frames govern the adolescent time frames. It's the same thing in the animal kingdom, it's the same thing in the human kingdom. The more mature, the, the, more, um, the more potent the decision making, the more wisdom is in the candlesticks, right? Respect your elders, I respect older candlesticks, simple as that. So with that said, the monthlies at resistance, the weekly is at resistance. Do I do I long resistance? Do I buy resistance? No, hell no. What I do is I sell resistance, I short the market at resistance, and I watch the market fall and I get rich as a repercussion. It's a tandem seesaw effect, right? It's a Libra scale. It's a Libra scale, dude. I don't just stand there and, and get swept away. No, definitely not. We're not Tom, Dick and Harry, right? Tom, Dick and Harry want to buy and hold and call it an investment. An investment is a trade gone wrong. I'm not here to invest, especially now. Gaza, Israel, Ukraine, Russia. I'm not an investor, I'm a trader, bro. I'll leave that investing for you guys if you really want to do that. I'm not investing shit in this market. I'm sorry, but I'm not. You know my inflections. If we start seeing price action close above 28.1, I might change my opinion. And I'll publicly tell you that on my podcast. I might change my opinion if, being the predicate, if we close back above 
respectfully, we are pretty close. Right now, Bitcoin price action delivery is at $27,859, but it doesn't mean nothing to me, right? As long as we're underneath 28.1, that is the ironclad proverbial line in the sand. So yeah, simple as that really. Now we've got sell pressure, further cement in the downtrend. We've also got a myriad of reasons here. So the 200 days is one of them. The diagonal resistance is another one. We've also got a sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency, which we've discussed on a monthly, which is also present on a weekly, which shows us the worst candlestick this year was delivered in August. Meaning as long as we're underneath the consequent encouragement, which is just another word for the middle zone. So as long as we're underneath the middle zone of the worst candle this year, my opinion is still to the downside. If we reclaimed the consequent encouragement, which is the middle ground of the worst candle this year, I would then change my opinion in accordance because we're reaccumulating. But right here, right now, we are distributing to the downside. It's not an opinion, it's an observation. And we look at multiple time fractals to draw that conclusion. And we use our trend volume indicators to tell us to raise a precision on the inflections. I don't make shit up, dude. I coded this. I coded it myself in my bedroom. I spent years coding this. So I could literally drink my drink. I could maybe smoke some weed here and there. And I would still be razor point sharp with my portfolio. Make sense? Hope it does. Okay, cool. So again, numbers don't lie. You know, this is formula over feelings. Just because you feel a certain way doesn't mean the world is going to be that way. We adapt our sale to the ebbs and flows of the open market liquidity. That's how you survive, right? Any political regime. Do you remember, in Liz Trust, we trust. What happened to Liz? Um, Rishi ain't gonna save you, I'll tell you that. You have to get educated on the political regime, on the monetary regime. It's your fiduciary responsibility or you will be working harder and you will be working longer. And a lot of you, you don't wanna do that. You know you don't wanna do that. A lot of you, you hate your jobs. A lot of you got Monday blues right now, right? A lot of you are dreading to work tomorrow. You know, tomorrow you're hating that shit. You're like, just the thought of it. You're like, oh my God, I've got to go sleep early, then wake up early. Arr. And I know that feeling. I used to be, I used to be that person. I used to hate working on Mondays, especially on Sunday. It's like you push it to the back of your mind and then you remember you've got work tomorrow. It's like, oh my God, really? And this is why I'm trying to teach you guys how to trade. So you don't have to go to work and cut your time out for, for Fiat Tree Barter at the end of the month after you've done your toil. That's slavery, bro. I'm not gonna get too opinionated on that today, but you know what I'm saying on that. Right, life is too short to work Monday, Friday for Saturday, Sunday off. Life is too short to work 365 days a year for four weeks off. That's slavery, my guy. I'm not playing games with you. Blue collar, white collar, now, you know, before it was metal collar. The Babylonian system is still present. It's just modernized. It's just modernized. It's not black versus white no more. It's education versus technology, right? Because that's what it is. And now we live in the age of technology. It's decentralized education. I was speaking to a lot of my cohort over the weekend and we were really discussing the revolution of AI and what this really does mean for you and me. And it's nuts. You know, before we had to pay thousands to go to university, now we can just go on chat GPT, ask a question, and we get a higher level answer than any lecturer could provide us with for free. Now, it's not just chat GPT, it's Google Bard. Google Bard is another free AI service that I think is slightly better than chat GPT. You can feed it images. I mean, check this, right? So you see my chart right now that we're looking at. I would screenshot the chart put it into chat GPT or put it into Google Bard and say, analyze this, tell me what you think. And it will tell me exactly, it will deduce the top down analysis for me. It will tell me what the momentum's doing, the trend, the volume, the volatility, and how one should play it. Bro, it's changed everything. You don't even realize, but it's changed everything. And it's just the beginning. Later this month, we've got Meta coming out with their Ray-Ban glasses. These are the first glasses to contain AI built into glasses. They're gonna be priced at $299 and they come out on the 17th of October. The revolution will be televised. Technology is your salvation. It's your ticket out. It's your Charlie, it's your Charlie and the chocolate ticket out of slavery. You do realize that, but you have to utilize it properly. Don't abuse it. 
a lot of these kids are on TikTok or they're watching porn or they're following Kardashians or they're on Instagram scrolling. They're wasting their time. They're not utilizing the technology properly. I feel passionate about that. That's why they're having to work slave jobs because they're not utilizing the technology properly. That's why I coded algorithms to tell me what to do. So I could go live my life, do recreational activities and still make money, bro. And not have to be at a certain place at a certain time, you know, keep my phone in my pocket, not get my phone out because it might get confiscated. I call that slavery, bro. And it started in the school systems, right? They say, don't copy the smart kids. Don't get your phones out. We'll confiscate your phones. Idiots. Market, the Marxist construct full of idiots. In the real world, you need to copy the smart kids. It's critical. In the real world, you need to be connected. You need your phone. You need a smartphone. It's critical. Anyways, they say, don't be a disruptor. All the disruptors are entrepreneurs now. They're the ones that are killing the game. Come on, man. Be careful where you get your advice from. Be careful where you get your counsel from. Often they should be different places. I'm not gonna get business advice from a school teacher who drives a Clio, right? Drives a Renault Clio, or they drive a, a Nissan Micra, but they're gonna tell me about business and money and assets. Are you daft? Are you nuts? But you get the gist, right? I'm not gonna go too deep down the rabbit hole there. But yeah, looking at the weekly, volume to the downside, trend to the downside, momentum on the RSI is to the downside underneath $27,995. I put weight on that. Now let's look at the let's look at the daily, and then we're gonna look at the four hour, then we're gonna wrap it off. So looking at the daily, what do we see here? 96% sell pressure with 13 hours and 13 minutes until the daily expires. We are also underneath the 200 day look back period, which is exactly the same signature that we saw predicate on a weekly time frame. This is not by chance. This is not, this is not random. This is not luck, right? This is not luck, bro. When people say, oh, this is luck. I mean, yeah, if you're gambling, yeah, it might, it might be luck. This is a strategy that we've back tested on multiple different indices on multiple different time fractals for over eight years. It's not luck. Not luck. We call it a we call it a downtrend. We call it down momentum. We call it down volume. What does that mean? It means what gets measured gets accomplished. What gets measured gets accomplished. And I stand on it every day, Monday to Sunday on the podcast completely free. So you can make up your own mind. Am I talking the truth or am I hyperbolizing? Or am I really on this thing? Am I really on this thing? And God is my witness. Answer to the Almighty, His Imperial Majesty. So this is what I'm telling you. It's not all about money, it's about health and love. The last thing my father told me was it's not all about money, it's about health and love. But guess what, guys and dolls? If you do not have custody of your time, you'll be working harder for longer. And that means you have not got time to work on your health. You've not got time to spend with your loved ones. This skill set will provide you with time. It will give you custody of your time back. So you don't have to slave it for labor. Being serious. You've got to put your money to work or your body to work. One of the two. You start off with putting your body to work so you get some money. Then you've got to invest it, man. You've got to park it off. But I mean, you know, be smart with the investing, right? Trade, right? You know, don't just park it off for years and come back to it because it don't really work like that. You've got to be actively managing the, the portfolio. You've got to be keeping your fingers on the pulse so you can adapt to the ebbs and the flows of the ocean. That's why I've coded these indicators, these automation trading tools, and they do all the hard work for me. All the hard work for me. All I've got to do is whip my phone out, look at my phone due to face ID, tap the icon and bang, I know exactly why Guam. Not one of these humans can tell me different because my numbers do not lie to me. Being serious. Being serious. So again, monthly downtrend, down volume, down momentum. Same with the weekly, same with the daily. Slight different inflections on momentum. It's interesting, isn't it? Very interesting. Now let's pull up a four hour and let's see what the four hour is alluding to. Now let the cat out of the bag. The four hour is the worst time frame that we're looking at today, guys and dolls, right? So it's worse than the monthly, it's worse than the weekly and it's worse than the daily. 
So let's start off with this then. The sell pressure is to the tune of 94%. We've got one hour and 10 minutes until this four hour candlestick expires. That means there's approximately 5% buy pressure, which is F all. We also see a downtrend predicate on our trend volume pro version two at approximately nine o'clock last night, BST. We also, what we see here is a, well, a, a bit of a war going on between the 21 day look back period and the current four hour dildo. So again, not, not the best sign of continuation to the upside. And the momentum is hand over fist to the downside, chiseled in Greek marble. There's no Fs given, there's no oxymoron, there's no caveat. If this, then maybe that, no chance. The four hour is royally roasted. Now, let me be very, very particular with you. There's three reasons why the four hour momentum is buggered. And I'm gonna tell you all three reasons and exactly where I'd be wrong. So check this out. The RSI will continue falling underneath $27,919. Make a note of it. The MACD, which is better known as the moving average convergence divergence, will continue falling as long as Bitcoin is failing to reclaim back above 28,000 flat. Simple as that. The stochastic momentum as an extension will continue waning to the downside aggressively as long as Bitcoin is failing to reclaim a back above 27,956. So these numbers, don't let it go over your head. The first number was 27,900, the second was 28 flat, and the third was 27.9. What does that mean? Right now, Bitcoin is underneath all three of those numbers, so it means the momentum will continue waning and gaining in velocity to the downside, because what's in motion stays in motion till it stops. That's Newton's law of physics. And you know what comes next? Elon Musk once said this, he's seen many men and he's seen many women break the laws of woman and man, but no woman or man has broken the laws of physics. We are not in the business of catching falling knives. We're not in that business. If a knife is falling, I bet it keeps falling. How about that one? And we get rich as it falls. How about that one? Hashtag, right? I want this to be simple. I want you to understand the logic. I don't want it to go over your head. It's very effing simple. Cool, leave it there. So fantastic. I think we've done most of what we need to do today. We've discussed that the technicals are waning to the downside. Now, Legacy has bank holidays coming up on Monday. Denotably again, America, Canada, and Japan have a bank holiday. We've also got the International Monetary Fund meeting up next week, every day next week. And we've also got Andrew Bailey, which is the governor of the Bank of England, speaking on Friday and Saturday. So next week will be volatile. I can put my dreadlocks on the guillotine and tell you that up and down. And I can also tell you up and down that the trend is to the downside as well as the volume, as well as the momentum, as long as we're underneath 28.1. Do you get it? This ain't no random shit. This is by design, not by chance. This is by design. So cool, I think we'll leave it there. And obviously Israel, it's not good. You know, my, my heart and my condolences do go out to Israel. My prayers are with Israel. Um, and you know, war's never the answer. War is never the answer. I'm all about love. I believe love is the highest frequency that we can vibrate on. You can miss me with the money talk. The money talk is just a byproduct of having our faculties about us, right? And we're just playing our part in the Babylonian system until we go back up to heaven. So I'm keeping it very real with you. Um, it's not a money thing around here. It's how you survive around here. So I'm gonna leave it there. God bless you, God bless your families. You know, take yourself out the screen today, go do some exercise, spend some time with your loved ones. And I seriously mean that. If you've got a strong body and a strong mind, there is nothing that this political establishment can throw at you, right? They can't make you do limbo. If you've got your strong backbone, you will walk with, with a strong, you know, a strong walk. And that's what it's about. So yeah, I think we're just about done. Thank you for bearing with me. How long was that? About 40 minutes. Hopefully you've got something out of this 40 minutes, you know. Sometimes I do get a little bit opinionated, um, but it's just to impose upon you that this is real, you know. This is not gonna go anywhere. You know, due to Moore's law, Metcalf law and Reed's law, we are living in the technology revolution. This is not the industrial revolution. It's not the iron age. This is the internet age. And we are the bastions to that shit. I'm flying the flag religiously with that. I believe that technology is the beacon of, you know, um, social mobility, let's call it that. 
if you use technology right, it will be social mobility for you. But you've got to use it. You can't have cognitive dissonance and put your head in the sand bucket and think it will pass over because it won't. It will just get better and better. And the ones that are using it will use it to manipulate you. And that's the way this world is. It's very, very brutal. But you've got the high IQ people that always brutalize and, you know, marginalize the dumb ones. It happens from millennia, top down. In every society, there's a hierarchy, okay? And typically, the people at the top have the most information. But now, guess what? It's, it's totally different. The information's being decentralized. We've got AI, okay? The first level of the internet was made by DARPA as a response to the Cold War. I'm gonna give you a quick history lesson with the internet, right? The internet was spawned out of the Cold War and it was DARPA's response from America. So America made the internet, right? There's no real shock horror there. If I tell you that, I mean that. Now, the next thing is, the next evolution was, you know, web browsers, okay? So we had things like Ask Jeeves, Yahoo, Google Search. That was web one, the first layer of the internet. The second layer of the internet was then social media, you know, your Facebooks, your WhatsApps, um, you know, you know the gist, all those social media applications you've got on your mobile phone that you stalk celebrities on and you stalk other people, influencers, etc. That's layer two of the web. Layer three of the web is blockchain protocols, you know, the Bitcoin synopsis, the whole adolescent asset class. Since 2009, we had the white paper, and then since then, it's just been God mode, right? So that's level three, or layer three, should I say. That's the metaverse, um, blockchain, AI, augmented reality. These things start to spawn from that. Now, we are literally on the cusp of AI having sentience. This is where we are going with it, right? We are heading towards the singularity. So it's your fiduciary purpose to adapt to the technology, because I'm telling you now, in the future, they're going to phase out cash, right? We're going to live in a cashless society and it will be all on the blockchain. Why? It won't be it won't be Bitcoin. I'm telling you now, I don't think Bitcoin will be the uh, the one. I think it will be a centralized banking coin, like a CBDC, they call it, um, because it's a public register. So you can't do nothing nefarious on a public register. That's the beauty of a blockchain. You can trace back the first transaction to the genesis, sorry, you can, let me get my words out here. You can trace any transaction back to its genesis transaction. You can't do that with any other nation state fiat barter. You can't do it with the pound, the euro, the yen, the dollar, the Brazilian real, the Russian ruble. You can't do it with none of them, but blockchain, right? You, blockchain, you can trace it back to its genesis transaction. That's why the real elite and the real establishment, they love it. They love it. That's why they've not stopped it yet because they know they can control a lot of people with it and they can get a lot of data from people's movements and their spending habits from the blockchain synopsis. There's a lot of data that you can excrete from that. So anyone that's done something, you know, booky or nefarious with Bitcoin, they're fucking idiots because they're going to get found out. It's a public register. It's destiny. This is why they love it. It's like rat poison, right? It's rat poison for these idiots. That's why we use it as a bearish instrument. That's why we trade it up and down like a seesaw. I'm not interested in buying and holding. I'm not interested in that. I know the big agenda. I know the big plan. Anyways, I'll leave it there. I've got a ginger shot here, turmeric ginger shot. Let's bust that real quick. So yeah, this is serious topics, right? And this is the Sunday special, so it's gonna be a little bit longer than the weekday renditions. But it's happening all around us. Like I say, we've got Meta coming out with their new AI glasses. We've got ChatGPT and Google Bard that can now read images. We don't need to go to university no more to get educated. And that's the biggest eureka moment. Before, education was reserved for the posh people or the rich people. Um, but now it's all decentralized. You know, people in Africa have got access, people in third world countries have got access, and it's really good. You know, I think it will be a net benefit for productivity. I think productivity will go through the roof, and in aging populations, AI will be the bastion to boost productivity. Yeah, simple as that. Um, so yeah, I do think we're living in the golden age of technology. So I don't think it's gonna be like, you know, the Victorian times, if we do go back into a big war, I think there'll be a lot of opportunities still, as long as you know how to use technology. And I'm being serious. This is why I've formed this company. This is why I do these free podcasts Monday to Sunday to really drum that message. 
you know in school they never told you to get good debt to go buy houses that cash flow they told you to buy a house until you you know get a 25 year mortgage get married have kids that's dumb dude I'm not trying to I'm not going to offend anyone I've got a lot of my friends that have done that I'm not offending anybody I'm just saying look no one told you to go buy assets or buy a business and get cash flow right in school they don't teach you that they teach you how to be a copycat you know like copy the herd copy the sheep copy don't copy shepherds copy the sheep and the pigs but you know sheep and pigs get slaughtered right all day long sheep and pigs get slaughtered you can either be ordinary or extraordinary and to be extraordinary you've got to do extra stuff dude there's no there's no there's no get rich quick pill it is what it is if you want extraordinary stuff you've got to go down that path you just got to do it you just got to know there's another path to go and explore be adventurous because you've only got one life to live you know we're not living this twice and that's why it's, and that's why I take it so deep, right? Because it's like, it's not a money thing. It's really not for me. I just want you guys to, to be woke to the actual real agenda. And I want you to be able to provide for your family without having to slave your time. And that is all my agenda is here, right? That's it. That's it, man. I'm not telling you to get rich quick or by, by buying Bitcoin. That's dumb. I'm telling you there's technical analysis at play and there's fundamental analysis at play. And you should marry the two disciplines and form your own thesis. So you can navigate what's going on right here in our timeline in October 2023. And who God bless, no man curse. So, you know, we stay on this topic. Mm. Okay, cool. So again, looking at the four hour, I'd be betting the market falls. Looking at the daily, same, weekly, same, monthly, same. My opinion doesn't change, dude, until we go back above 28.1, if being the predicate, if we go back above 28.1. I mean, if we do, then I'd speculate towards the current yearly highs back at 30 grand. But then I think, you know, we'll measure it step by step, level by level, manage expectations realistically. Rome was not built in a day, right? Remember that? Okay. Um, what else do I want to mention? Alexandra's library, I think this is a good place as well to go into it. So talking about knowledge and information and the age that we're in right now, do you remember what they've done to Alexandra's library? It stored most of the integral wisdom from the ancients and they burn it down, right? Now we've got AI. AI is another chance at Alexandra's library. So you've got to utilize Alexandra's library very well before they burn it down again. That's what I feel, you know, that's what I think and feel. Anyways, um, I think we're gonna leave it here. I think this is a great place to leave it. I don't want to go too down my narrative rabbit hole. Keep it strict to the data. As you know, fundamentals, massive volatility next week from Legacy. Um, and yeah, I think that's basically it, guys and dolls. Is there anything else that we should be going over that we haven't already mentioned? Um, let's look at the total cryptocurrency market cap pretty quickly. This looks like something we should go into. One second. Mm. Okay. So I'm just gonna quickly mark the chart so you guys can actually see me in real time, how I actually annotate charts. You might gain something out of this. So what we're looking at here, I'm actually gonna mute my, um, my Trend Volume Pro version two just for a brief moment. So what we're gonna do here is grab a rectangle right there. And we're just gonna measure some imbalances on liquidity on the total cryptocurrency market cap. So here is where we'd have a sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. So I'd mark that there and then I'd put it in red. So you guys can see that, right? So that's the resistance here at 1.9, sorry, $1.09 trillion, right? Which is this rectangle depiction here. Now, in terms of the support, I'd be deriving support here on this buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, which is the polar opposite to a BISI, sorry, SIBI and a BISI is the polar opposites, right? So you've got the buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, or you've got the sell side imbalance, you know, you get the gist right. <laughs> the green is buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, and the red is a sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency, right? Just the opposites. So cool. Um, now let's look at this, right? We need to change the color of that so we can actually synthesize what we're talking. Okay, and we'll make that green. Good for us. So this is the range, right? So I think ultimately Bitcoin is going to be ranging between, well, 
should I say, the total cryptocurrency market cap will be ranging between 1.08 trillion and approximately 1.04 trillion dollars. So that's what we're looking at. If we break above 1.09, I do suspect we'll continue much, much further. However, as long as we're underneath $1.09 trillion, I'd be targeting towards 1.04 and seeing how we defend that region, if we defend that region. And then if we don't defend that region, I'd be expecting much lower over a period of time, back towards the September saga, back down here towards underneath one trillion. And I think that's when it really gets spicy, right? If we break the psychological barrier of one trillion dollars, it will be very bad to the downside, very bad. So this is what we're looking at here, right? If we break above 1.09 trillion, that would be good for the whole crypto ecosystem. I'm expecting a soft bounce around 1.04 trillion dollars for the whole ecosystem. Failing a bounce at 1.04, I do derive targets back towards 992 billion, which is sub 1 trillion. And then I think it will be very hard for the crypto bulls to reclaim back above $1 trillion market cap because it will be such a psychological barrier, as you can appreciate. The market's full of psychology. It's full of emotions, right? Human fear, greed, and hope. And if we lose that $1 trillion psychological barrier, it will be very hard to reclaim it. So this is the big picture for me going into the end of the year. Um, this is exactly how I'd be looking at it. You can screenshot this, do whatever you want with this chart, but this is exactly how I'd be looking at the, the market capitalization period. Now we also see the RSI is falling on this as well, MACD and stochastics, and we, you know, got downward posture on all these momentum metrics. So I don't see it stopping. I don't see it stopping. And especially with everything going on in the real world, I just don't think it's time to speculate to the upside, you know? If we break above 1.09, I'd be wrong. You know, I, I call Cod's Wallop on my synopsis. I'd be wrong if we close back above 1.09 trillion. Right now we're 1.06 trillion, not looking likely. So look, I'm gonna leave it here. That's been long enough today. That's 51 minutes of alpha. Each one teach one, resin numerous, strength in numbers. God bless you, God bless your families. And I will see you tomorrow.